All right, welcome back. We're looking at concept one, we're looking at Massachusetts and again the development of Puritanism. Um, we're looking at, um, um, we're going to define Purit in this concept, we're going to define Puritanism as it was defined in the discussion under the colony of New Plymouth. Um, while the colony of New Plymouth was struggling, so while the colony that we were discussing earlier was struggling in the 1620s. A dozen fishing and trading posts were founded along New England coast from southern Maine to Massachusetts Bay. So from up here all the way on down to here. Um, and in some cases without permission, right? So you're having basically more and more colonies develop um, after uh, New Plymouth has been founded. One of these trading posts uh, established in 1626 uh, was developed at present-day Salem um, and was taken over by a group of leading congrega Congregationalists in 1628. After obtaining a charter for Massachusetts Bay uh, Company from King Charles I in 1629, when Anglo-Catholic pressures began um, to be severely felt, the Congregationalists voted to transfer charter government and membership um, to New England. The colony got off to a fast start with a, a well-equipped expedition in 1630 with 11 ships carrying 900 to 1,000 men and women who founded Boston and seven other towns nearby. The transfer um, of Massachusetts Bay Charter and the result of the transfer represent an important element in the development of American institutions. One, with the charter and company in America, the colony became practically independent from England. The free men as stockholders, um, as stockholders were, were then called, became voters and elected the governor, deputy governor, and assistants who made up the upper branches of the legislative assembly. Thus, neither the king nor parliament had any say in uh, the Massachusetts government. The franchise, or right to vote, was restricted to church membership, which prevented non-congregationalists from participating in government. So it's limited d democracy, very limited democracy, but nonetheless, the, 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 um, the development of democracy is happening independent of Great Britain. So keep that in mind. Very important to keep that in mind when thinking of the concept of salutary neglect. Um, in 1635, the English government tried to revoke the Massachusetts Bay um, Charter, but the colony refused to return it. They, just, they basically said, well, that's nice. <laughs> After numerous delays and pleas from Massachusetts, plus internal political and religious problems within England, England finally was in a position to revoke the charter in June of 1684. After almost 50 years of self-government to develop. Right, so that would be... Um, right now it is 2012, so um, basically talking about 1960, um, right? Thinking about things that went on back in 1960 to now. So think about all the things that have happened since 1960 to 2012 right here in this country. So 50 years of self-government. And finally in 1684, um, Great Britain revokes the charter and is trying to impose its will. On, great, uh, on its colonies in, in New England. Salutary neglect again became unofficial policy of the English government, which allowed for truly American institutions, um, such as geographical representation versus virtual representation, to develop within the American environment out of the European model. So between uh, 1686 and 1689, England attempted to end salutary neglect with uh, the creation of the Dominion of New England. So, so this was an attempted creation at a colony. Uh, the Dominion was a vast uh, new colony which included all of New England, New York, and New Jersey. So it was going to try to um, be from all the way here, New York, all the way on up through Massachusetts uh, and Maine. Um, oops. And so um, where, where was I? Um, so the Dominion uh, was to serve several purposes. 
Most important, the Dominion was designed to promote urgently needed efficiency and administration of the English uh, Navigation Acts. The Navigation Acts sought to stitch the colonies um, uh, more tightly to uh, the mother country and cut off American trade with countries not ruled um, by the English Crown. Basically, what the Navigation Acts were is that if you're going to trade and you are going to trade colonists, you trade with us, right? Um, using our boats, our ships, and our uh, through our legal means. Um, so it was an attempt to enforce these navigation acts as early as 1684 with the Dominion of England. Uh, the Dominion was also an attempt to lighten the cost of administration and generally tighten the overall control of the colonies. Finally, the Dominion was aimed at bolstering colonial defense um, in the event of war with Native Americans and the French of Canada. Right? So it was basically a consolidation of power and trying to gain control of its England, trying to end salutary neglect. But this is a big problem because this has been developing for 50 years. And so it's very much akin to uh, a parent who wants to, um, who's, who's raised their child quite liberally. Like you can go hang out with whoever you want, you can stay out as late as you, as you want to, I'll buy you whatever you want, all of these things, right? Basically raising a spoiled brat. <laughs> and then around 14, 15, 16 years old, the child starts to develop his own identity and becomes rebellious and talks back and stays out later than is reasonable and maybe experiments with drugs and starts causing all sorts of problems at home. And then the parent all of a sudden says, okay, from now on, you're not hanging out with those people. You're coming home at this, this um, hour. Um, you're not going to, I'm going to take away your, uh, your, your uh, s smartphone and you can't, um, play World of World Warcraft anymore, right? You can't do any of those things anymore. You're going to cause major problems. There's going to be huge conflict in that house because of the uh, change in relationship, right? And this is what's going to happen in um, the colonies as well. The headquarters for the Dominion was uh, in Boston, and Sir um, Edmund Andros was made the governor of the new, new colony. Andros, who had been a professional soldier, had shown um, early has shown earlier as governor of New York that he could be a skilled colonial administer, administrator. At the d demand of King J J James II, all colonial legislatures were dissolved, and Andros and local councils appointed by the king assumed all the judicial and legislative power. Andros um, charged uh, quit rents and, and laid heavy restrictions on the press and schools uh, to start off with his um, um, tenure uh, in power. The results of Andrew's actions forced um, these uh, liberty-loving colonists, accustomed to unusual privileges during long decades of neglect, to edge on, uh, on revolt. Um, meanwhile, in Europe, you had the Glorious Revolution of 1688 going on, which was basically a civil war in um, Great Britain. Which, disp which disposed of um, King James and created an opportunity for the colonists to rid themselves of the dominion of New England. When word reached Massachusetts that William and Mary had been offered the crown in England, Congregationalists wasted little time in jailing Andros and his council in, in what resulted in a bloodless revolution of over a thousand armed colonists. The justification to overthrow um, uh, was the Dominion was part of King James' tyrannical policies and was no longer a legal or valid institution. Massachusetts, um, though rid of Andros, did not gain as much from the upheaval as it had hoped. In 1691, um, it was made a royal colony with a new charter and a new royal governor. Worst of all, the privilege of voting, once a monopoly of church members, was to be enjoyed by all qualified male property owners. Um, the rise and fall of the Dominion, what's significant about it, marks a turning point in American history. Success would have led to uh, the unification of the colonists under two separate governors. If, if successful, the rest of the colonies would have been combined into a southern Dominion, and the reduction of colonial self-government would have taken place. Also, if successful, um, which it wasn't, uh, there would have been no colonies to become states after the American Revolution, 
and possibly, probably no American Revolution at all because um, salutary neglect would have stopped in 1686 um, rather than in 1763. So it was an attempt, the Dominion of New England was an attempt to impose um, direct rule from Great Britain in this area. It fails because Great Britain um, erupts in civil war with the glorious revolution of 1688, so it becomes um, once again distracted um, and is not able to impose its authority in the colonies. So this is really significant because um, from the, the late 1600s all the way up to 1763 with the French Indian War coming to an end, uh, which we'll talk about later, um, the colonies maintain salutary neglect as policy. All right, so that's uh, concept one. Um, click on to concept two, and let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you guys later. Bye.